Hi Roadrunners, you did it. You made it through the first few weeks of your term. You found your classes, you submitted some assignments, and many of you have even had midterms or major projects. I know you're incredibly busy right now, but this is a really good time to be strategic. Pause and take a moment to ask yourself what's going well and what's not going so well. I'm hearing from a lot of you that remote learning is challenging in ways that you didn't anticipate. You're enjoying the flexibility and you're really appreciating how caring your instructors are, but you're also struggling to keep up and keep track of everything. First, know that you're not alone. If you talk to your classmates or look at LB Live, you'll find many others feeling the same way. And you'll see that the struggle is real, especially for those of you who are parenting or working or both. You find that just keeping track of due dates and assignments can be time consuming. Sometimes it's hard to know what to prioritize, especially when you've got five classes worth of assignments all due at 11.59 p.m. on Sunday. You get bogged down by technical issues or um, software for assignments that you have to download. And information is coming at you from all directions, email, Moodle, LB Live. Not to mention, there are way more distractions at home than there were in the classroom. In some ways, this term is actually hardest for those of you who are used to being really strong students. It's difficult to keep up with the volume of work and the new expectations from your instructors. For those of you feeling this way, know that there's nothing wrong with you. Remote learning truly does take a whole new skill set. Don't be hard on yourself if you didn't magically develop that skill set overnight. But also, don't wait for those skills to magically appear tomorrow. They are something you have to learn intentionally. And if you're still struggling now, you will continue to struggle if you don't actively make some changes. The good news is that these skills can be learned and there are some concrete actions that you can take to work on those things that aren't going so well right now. First, get organized. I know we've all heard a million tips on time management and planners, etc. And yes, you should have a planner or some organized way to track due dates and assignments, but that's not actually what I'm talking about. I'm talking about taking 15 minutes to organize the most basic information about your courses. You can do this with a Google spreadsheet or on a paper bag. The important part is that you set aside some time and headspace to do it. You'll want to start by writing down each of your classes on a grid like this. Then for each class, fill in the following, the CRN, the instructor name, class times and days, if there are any, class locations, like a classroom or just Zoom, the platform like Moodle, Canvas, Alex, or a combination of those, any regular due dates like discussions due Wednesday at 5 p.m., responses due Friday at 11.59 p.m., free writes due Sunday at 11.59 p.m. Of course, you have specific due dates for larger papers and projects, but those don't go here. Put those in your planner or Google Calendar. Any additional important notes, that might be your instructor's preferred contact information or a website you need during class, anything that's important to remember every week. Now you may end up looking at this every week or you may never look at it again. The important part is the process of creating this and feeling like you have an understanding of the big picture. This will help alleviate some of the anxiety and prevent surprises. The next thing you can do is get support. As I said, remote learning takes a whole new skill set, and you're going to need support in developing those skills. Plus, maybe your first midterm didn't go as well as you'd hoped, and you'd like the next one to be a little bit better. Be strategic and resourceful, and use the resources that are available to you. That includes academic coaching, math support, the writing center, English language support, research help at the library, tools and accommodations through the Center for Accessibility Resources. All of these things and more are yours to use. Check out the Student Services section of the Lynn Benton website for more information on how to access and contact each of these resources. Remember that support can come in all shapes and sizes. Sometimes the best support actually comes from your fellow students. Consider trying to form a study group. Check out the virtual study groups on the Learning Center's Discord server. There's no reason for you to have to study for that test alone, even when you're not on campus. Finally, in person or online, it is always a good idea to get to know your instructors. It makes for a richer learning experience for you. Instructors who know you can help with job or scholarship references. 
And sometimes just 10 minutes with an instructor in office hours can give you that reassurance you need to know you're heading in the right direction with the project you're working on. This term though, your relationship and communication with your instructor is more crucial than ever. As an instructor, I need to know that the workload is manageable, the assignments are helpful, and that the content and instructions are clear and accessible to my students. In a face-to-face -face class, I can see this on your face. I can see the joy, surprise, curiosity, confusion, engagement, overwhelm, but I can't see any of that in my remote club courses. Instead, I have to rely on feedback from you, my students. Remote classes can create incredible opportunities for learning, they also create a lot of opportunities for mistakes. When I was setting up my own Moodle course, there were hundreds of settings and dates and links that I could click and change and set. And as you can imagine, I made a few mistakes. If you encounter confusion or mistakes in your remote course, respectfully let your instructor know. I am always grateful for this feedback from my students and other students are as well. Do be aware that when you send an email, it may take some time to get a response. As I'm sure you've noticed, students and instructors alike are getting so many emails. One way to ensure you get a quick response is that you make your email easy to respond to. What I mean is tell the instructor what course and CRN you're in, include the name of the assignment you're referring to, and tell them what you already know or already tried. Maybe you can include a screenshot of the issue you're experiencing. The point is that the less research an instructor has to do to answer your question, the more likely you are to get a quick response. Also, consider attending your instructor's office hours rather than just writing an email. This is time that is set aside for students and instructors love talking to students during this time. If you're having trouble for any reason connecting with your instructor, you can reach out to the first resort for help, that's First resort at lynnbenton.edu, or you can also contact the academic dean of your program. Whatever you do, just be sure you do something. Take a step toward getting organized, getting support, or connecting with your instructor. One step at a time is how you will meet your goals this term. Have a great week, and I'll see you next time.